Welcome to a lesson on the definition of a definite integral. A definite integral is given using this notation here, where if a function f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, then the definite integral of f of x integrated with respect to x from a to b is defined as the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum of these products. Now we should recognize the sum of these products as the sums that we used to approximate the area under a function and above the x-axis using rectangles. So this is telling us that as a number of rectangles bounded by the function and the x-axis approach infinity, the sum of the area of those rectangles approaches the value of the def integral. Let's look at an animation to better understand this. Notice here's a non-negative function over the closed interval from zero to eight and we could use the area of these four rectangles to approximate the area under the curve and above the x-axis. But as the number of rectangles increases, our approximation of the area will get better and better. So as the number of rectangles approaches infinity, the area of these rectangles approach the value of the def integral. Now notice in this example, the width of each interval is the same, but this doesn't have to be the case. And also notice that we're using the right side of each interval to determine the height of the rectangle. But of course we could also use the left side, which would look like this. In either case, as the number of rectangles approach infinity, the area of the rectangles approach the value of the def integral. And as in this case, if the function is non-negative, then the def integral of f of x integrated with respect to x from a to b is equal to the area below the function and above the x-axis over the closed interval from a to b. Looking at the graph of y equals sine x below, notice on the interval from zero to pi, the sine function is non-negative, so the shaded area would be equal to the integral of sine x integrated with respect to x from zero to pi. And we don't know yet, but this area is exactly two square units, and therefore the value of this def integral would also be two. Now if the function happens to be negative or below the x-axis on the closed interval, then the integral of f of x from a to b would be equal to the opposite of the area below the x-axis on the closed interval from a to b. So because of symmetry, this orange area is also two square units, but because the area is below the x-axis, this tells us the integral of sine x integrated with respect to x on the interval from pi to two pi would be equal to negative two. And now if we have a function that's positive and negative, for example here, the sine function on the closed interval from zero to two pi, the value of the def integral over the closed interval from zero to two pi would be equal to the area above the x-axis minus the area below the x-axis. And because of the symmetry, this area is two square units and so is this, which means that we wanted to find the integral of sine x integrated with respect to x from zero to two pi. This would be equal to positive two when we integrate from zero to pi, plus when we integrate from pi to two pi though, that would be negative two, giving us a value of zero. Now we're concerned about the area under functions for a variety of reasons, and here's a simple example. Let's say an empty tank starts being filled with water at a rate of four gallons per minute. How much water is in the tank after 45 minutes? Well, our rate function would just be the constant function r of t equals four. If we graph this on the coordinate plane, it would look like this, graphed here in blue. Because the tank is being filled for 45 minutes, if we found the area under this function over the closed interval from zero to 45, this would give us the amount of water in the tank after 45 minutes, which would be the area under the function over this closed interval. And we can find this area using the area formula for a rectangle. Notice how the height would be four and the width would be 45. So we can say that the def integral of four integrated with respect to t from zero to 45 is equal to this area 
which would be four times 45, which is equal to 180, which would be the number of gallons in the tank after 45 minutes if it's being pumped at a rate of four gallons per minute. Let's take a look at another example. Here we want to find the area under the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus two and above the x-axis on the closed interval from zero to five. So we're trying to find the area of these two shaded regions here. And because we have two separate regions and the function is non-negative, we can represent this area as two separate def integrals given here below. We we'll notice how we first integrate from zero to two and then we integrate from two to five. And again, we can evaluate these because these regions are triangles where the area of a triangle is equal to one-half base times height. So this first def integral would be equal to the area of this shaded region, which would be one-half times the base of two times the height of two, plus then the integral from two to five would be equal to this area here, which would be one-half times the base, which is from two to five, that's three units, times the height, which is also three. So the sum of these def integrals is equal to the sum of these products, which would be one-half times two times two, that would be two, plus here we have nine halves. Well, two is equal to four halves. Four halves plus nine halves will be 13 halves. So this is the value of the sum of these two def integrals, which is also the area of these two shaded regions. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we're given this graph and we're told the areas of each region. We want to use this to evaluate each of the given def integrals. Let's go ahead and label the areas. This is eight square units. A sub two is five square units. A sub three is three square units. And A sub four is also three square units. So the value of the def integral of f of x integrated with respect to x from zero to three, notice how the function is non-negative over this interval, is equal to this area here, which equals eight. Next we have the integral of f of x from three to five. Well notice from three to five the function is below the x-axis, and since this area is five square units and the area is below the x-axis, this integral is equal to negative five. So now if we want to find the integral of f of x from zero to five, this would be equal to the sum of the first two integrals, where if we integrate from zero to three, because the area is above the x-axis, that would be positive eight, plus when we integrate from three to five though, we would get negative five, eight plus negative five is equal to positive three. Next we have the integral of f of x from zero to seven. So when we integrate from zero to three, we'd have positive eight, plus we integrate from three to five, that would be negative five. When we integrate from five to seven, notice how the area is above the x-axis, so that would be positive three. So eight plus negative five is three, plus three is positive six. And then finally we have the integral of f of x from three to 10. So we're integrating from here to here. So when we integrate from three to five, that would be negative five because the area is below the x-axis. Plus, we integrate from five to seven. The area is three and it's above the x-axis, so that's plus positive three. Plus, we integrate from seven to 10, the area is below the x-axis, and therefore it'd be negative three. So the value of this def integral would be equal to negative five plus three plus negative three, which is equal to negative five. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.